is good. Now, can you guys see the chart, or am I just in the way? You can see it. Want me to go this way or this way? I know it's on the left or right side. You know it's on the left. So, you want a camera operator? If you don't mind, now, Keisha couldn't be here today. If you don't mind. You know what? I didn't open the lens. You what? I gotta open the lens. <laughs> well, that would help. <laughs> you know? She actually did that last time. She recorded without the lens. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. So, like we always do, we study God's word. Rightly divided, 2 Timothy 2 15. Who knows it by heart? Who knows it by heart? Anybody want to try to say it by heart? I know you don't really fall. <laughs> Anybody else besides Brother Paul? Go ahead, Brother Paul. Study to show, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Thank you. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You'll see that in the Bible, in the King James Bible, there's a word called dispensation. It is a King James Bible word. Paul talks about these three, different, these three major divisions. Time past, but now, ages to come. To get a really good understanding, what he mentions in this phrase, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, it basically gives you an idea of the time past system. The nation of Israel, the Jews, they had an advantage. They were God's people. They had God's covenant. They had the law. The Gentiles were down here. They did not have none of that. They, did, they were lost. They were without Christ in the world. They didn't have the promises. But God had them in mind all along. It's not until we get to, in our Bible, the book of Romans, or should I say Acts chapter 9, verse 15 is the introduction where Jesus Christ, who was in heaven, after his death, burial, and resurrection, from heaven, he saved Saul of Tarsus. Paul, changed the name of Paul, he becomes the first member of the body of Christ. And from this point on, you see that God's good news, being saved from all your sins, is to all people. We're going to take a really good look at this today. I, I, if you take notes, make sure you write this down when we talk about in the future here. And so, right in the Bible, time past, Genesis to Acts. Acts is the transitional book. You see the fall of the nation of Israel, the dimension. Paul comes on the scene, Romans to Philemon. It's called the but now. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13 talks about this middle wall that separated the Jews and the Gentiles was broken down. Now salvation is open to all people. The blood of Jesus is sufficient for all people. The rapture will happen. We're getting very close as we speak. The body of Christ will be raptured or taken out of this world to the judgment seat of Christ. Some receive a reward, some suffer loss, but at least they're saved and they're in heaven. But they don't have the reward that God intended because they did not build upon Paul's foundation. And that's what we're doing today. The rapture will start the seven year tribulation period. Uh, this is Jacob's trouble. This is the seventh week of Daniel. These verses explain how life is going to be on the earth without the body of Christ. It's going to be a terrible time, especially that last part of the half of that seven years. The prayer at that time, and we all know this. Thy kingdom come. That's what they're praying for. Those who are still on the earth, those who um, were at this time waiting for the Messiah to come. And he will come. He will establish his throne. He will, like that scripture says in Daniel, that rock, he will destroy that new world order, all those kings and kingdoms put together. He will destroy it. He will reign on the earth. And I'm going very fast. Uh, a thousand years, Satan, one angel takes Satan and throws him into the bottom of his pit. If you read Revelation 20, it says he's in hell, the bottom of his pit, but there's a seal on his mouth. He can't even deceive anyone. And so the, the, the disciples at that time of the, the Old Testament saints, they're preaching God's word. They're sharing God's word. It goes across the whole world. And then after a thousand years, he's released out of hell. He deceives the nations again. And we'll see the final judgment, the great white throne. God erased out of fire and brimstone. 
All of those standing at that great white throne were thrown into the lake of fire. And after this, we step into all eternity. That's rightly divided in the word. Let me say this about the word of God. There's four points I want you to remember when it comes to the word of God. This is the word of God. Amen? Yeah. Say these few words with me. Revelation. Revelation. Inspiration. Inspiration. Illumination. Illumination. Preservation. Revelation, God to men. God revealed his word to man. Inspiration, from man to the paper. Illumination, from the paper to the heart and soul of the believer. Preservation, God's word being preserved. Am I saying that word preservation? God's word being preserved. From generation to generation, and the way that God chose to preserve his word is through the multiplicity of copies. Copies upon copies upon copies. Let me give you a few examples. Revelation. Go to uh, Exodus. You might get Exodus chapter 34. Um, look at Matthew 22. Matthew 22. Let's get those two. Where did it come from, Paul? Look at verse 12. 
For I neither received it of man, he didn't receive it from man, neither was I taught it, but by the what? Revelation of Jesus Christ. I ask Christians, do you follow Jesus Christ? Yes. <laughs> do you really, really follow Jesus Christ? Because if you don't major on Paul's 13 books, you're not getting the instructions from Jesus, the revelation that Jesus gave to Paul. Does that make any sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Inspiration. Man to paper. So God reveals to man his word. Now, from man to paper. Let me give you an example. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. I'm sorry. Second Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. Look at verse number 16. Actually, go to 15. You know, I'm going to start at 14. It's even better. <laughs> verse 14. But continue. Somebody say continue. Continue. Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. You know, I thank God for us being here today. We are continuing, amen? I know you could have stayed at home today. I know you could have stayed in the bed. It's Sunday. Sunday is the best sleep of the week. Amen? <laughs> but coming here today, we are continuing to learn and assured of, knowing of whom that thou hast learned them, and that from a child, how many children we have here today? Children, raise your hand, children, children, all right. And that from a child thou hast known the holy what? Scriptures. From a child, you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee what? Wise. Wise unto what? Salvation. Salvation through faith, which is around. <laughs> did, I, did I miss a word? Are y'all reading with me? Yeah. Is it in? Yeah. Which is in Christ Jesus. You see, these scriptures, children, are able to make you wise unto salvation. Parents, who want their children to have salvation at an early age? Or should we just wait till they get older? And experience all kind of trouble and then present the gospel to them. No. Stupid, right? Right away. Back to inspiration. Verse 16. All, not some, all scripture is given by what? The inspiration. Inspiration. What are we talking about? What about inspiration, right? Mm -hmm. All scripture. We have a complete Bible, 66 books. But that Bible tells you in 2 Timothy to rightly what? Divide it. It doesn't say throw it away. It doesn't say take out. It's saying notice the divisions. The rightly divide. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for what? Doctrine. Doctrine. For what? Reproof. For what? Correction. Hey, let's be honest. Who needs some correction in their life? Do our nation need some correction? <laughs> Do our leaders need some correction? Yeah. What, what can correct them? Mm. The Word of God. The Word of God. Here it is. It's for all. It applies to me and everyone, amen? For correction, for instruction in what? Righteousness. Who wants some instruction in righteousness? What is right? Pastor Jim, what is right? Well, let's get into God's word because it's been revealed, it is inspired. 
Now, let's go to illumination. Illumination. Now, don't throw that out of word Illuminati. I mean, I'm not, don't, hey. Illumination, we highlight, we, we see, we shed light upon what, from paper, from, from man to paper. Now, what's on the, what are the words on the page? Is that pretty simple? What are the words on the what? Do words mean something? Let me rephrase that. Does God's word, the words in God, the words on the page in God's Bible, does it mean anything? Somebody turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and somebody get Mark chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Is this making any sense so far? Yes. Are the wheels turning? Yes, they are. All right, I'm, I'm doing my job. I'm doing my job. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10 says, but God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. So when it comes to illumination, we can go back and look at the words on the page. You know, David said, your word is like a lamp unto my feet. God's word is like a, a lamp. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. world. He is the light. He says, any man that follows me shall not be in darkness. So illumination, we, 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 we highlight, we look deeper, we shed the light on the word of God. Mark chapter 12, Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12, look at verse 36. Mark chapter 12, verse 36. For David himself said, by the Holy Ghost, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thee, till, till I make thine enemies a footstool. David therefore himself calleth him Lord, and whence he said, and whence he then his son. Now that was not the verse I was looking for. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll get back to you on that. But illumination, the words on the page goes to the heart and soul of the believer. Another one here, preservation. Preservation. Uh, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30. I must have wrote that one down. I'm sorry. It's next week's sermon. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremiah. Chapter 30, Jeremiah. Chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30, if you look at verse 2. Now we're talking about preservation or preserve. God's word being preserved. Jeremiah 30, chapter, chapter 30, verse 2. Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the what? Words that I have spoken unto thee in a what? Book. Book. Through a multiplicity of copies, God's word has been preserved. Uh, let's go to... Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14. God's word being preserved from generation to generation. A multiplicity of copies. A multiplicity of copies. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 37. Verse 37. And it reads, this is Paul talking, If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I what? Right. Right unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Paul wrote, Jesus Christ dictated to Paul, Paul wrote it. And they began to make copies and copies and copies. There's another scripture where Paul says, that epistle that I wrote, share with all the churches. And that's what they would do. They didn't have a copy machine back then. 
They will, because they call it manuscripts, they will write and copy and copy and copy. So, recap. Revelation, God to man. Man, inspiration, man to paper. paper. Illumination, paper to the heart and soul of the what? Believer. And then preservation. God preserved it. The Bible says his, his word will be preserved forever.